Hey, what's going on guys and girls? Welcome back to the bench. Hard drive here, 163. Las Cruces, New Mexico. I'm going to try to cover a couple, three different things here. As many things as I can with this video as possible. One, this. Another 98. Mr. Lewis. And uh, uh, a 9730 and a 2030 plus. I mentioned before in the past that I wasn't at Liberty. You know, because I said I wouldn't talk about it to the guy about certain transistors and what you can be looking forward to in the future but after some testing of course so let's get into this real quick you know I'm just going to open this up from the back too many times the names etc and addresses have appeared you know you start flipping labels and little lids and I can't really see the camera while I'm doing this Good job, man, but the 88 bucks to ship it, that's that's expensive, man. Nice and sticky. Yeehaw! Popcorn! Yeah! Everywhere. Alright, so let's put this aside for now. drive wanting you to work the magic on the Galaxy 98. Make it cleaner and meaner. I like to put an amp on switches. Uh, and add, but we'll, we'll be talking now. I know you want to go big and I, I know what you're trying to do man and I'm trying not to let you blow your money. This might not be the right radio to use but Barefoot is going to be. And with a lot of the different things that are coming up into the future Transistor wise, etc., things are going to change. Not a lot, but they are. Alright, okay, we got name and all kind of stuff through this thing. It's all taped up. So let's get it untaped. Good job packing that. But the 88 bucks, wow. That was steep. This cut here. <coughs> Good job packing on the face, too. I see how you put your bubble pack in there. You really gotta watch the knobs. Got all the chromium covered, looking good. Not bad, man. Not bad. That's our well, it's just a shrink tube pulled off. We'll do a more extensive test on this as time goes by. I'm not sure we're going to get it open today. Alright, let's plug in a 500. are acting strange. Just a little sticky for some reason. Kill the echo, dial it straight up and down. It's like the, I'm not sure what's going on with the shafts. They're acting all sticky in the insulator. 
a little gasket. There's something strange about it. Anyways, let's dial them straight up and down. And let's go to CB channels. Put up the power. My D. Typical turned up too far. It looks like a out of the box type of thing too. Squeal has to go. And IND is ridiculous. That's too high. S9 isn't S9 or the power. It depends. Some people set them up differently. Normally, at wide open power, the, the needle should be right at the edge of uh, the nine. Very power. I don't know why they're all sticky. A low power. See, that, that, that doesn't look bad. Not bad. Wide open again. This is pretty dirty. And it's just turned up too far. Way too high. Let's take a look at yeah, 30 kilohertz. Like a galaxy. But it's, it's got more due to intermodulation distortion 300. Yeah, and again, the only thing I really see is turned up way too high going to compression, for AM that is, and intermodulation distortion. It's way too much. But of course, you know, if you look at this like a default setting of 20, you wouldn't see it. Alright? You guys need to pay attention to this. So again, Notice the difference? That would be a shady person trying to hide that from you. Alright, and uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Breaker, breaker, breaker. Audio. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Power output. It's like 145. Continuous. Let's put a 100 in there so we can see exactly what it's doing. It's not a hack job. That's kind of like a textbook. Almost. But you'll see, watch the meter closely. See, that's at 50. See it swinging backwards? Not a lot, but it is. It's swinging backwards. Which kind of tells you the formula. You know? PEP. Divided by 2, you know, for peak times 0.707, and or divide the PEP divided by 4, you know, is your carrier, times 0.707, you know, it should be perfect. Well, as you can see, the carrier's too high, and this thing's getting pretty hot already. Right. It's working, you know, continuous goes backwards but it's showing you know 50 watts it's way too high for these radios which just wouldn't have no modulation out there in the distance you'd hear it but you know you get lost in the mud all right so let's see uh let's 
go back to the 500. Uh, let's see if it's not a frequency. Dials are straight up and down. And it's warm. Let's see. Let's get the dials as straight as we can. Perfectly straight. 27, 2048. But you know, these are so touchy. Let's work it back and forth again. Look back up. You know, again, it says 27205. But these radios are going to be hard. Is it on frequency? Yeah. Is it on the same frequency transmit and receive? That'll be a different story. And probably another video. Alright, so it's a lot like coming out of the box. The carrier is way too high. Sideband. We have some serious issues. Yeah, that's got some very serious issues. Most people have a hard time with sideband on the export radios like these. I hope you get in there and see it. I'm not going to set the dual tone up at this particular time, but you'll see this. That'll focus in a little bit better. Audio 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Notice all the Casper, the friendly ghosts in there. 1, 2, 3, 4. Look at it close. See it one, two, three, four, five, C Q D X. Let's see if that'll focus. One, two, see it, all that fuzz, all that just like a cloudy looking day. Nothing's definite. Well, you'll see that when you look at them both. See all that right there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Uh, she's getting pretty warm. So let's see. S9 is way over where it should be. We'll, we'll do a more explicit video of this one here later on. Anyways, the exact fingerprint has just been shown, so we'll be able to determine whether or not anything's been altered. Remember, this is like a fingerprint. Getting back to the IRFs on these. Palomar Electronics, excuse me a moment. <laughs> Got the sniffles today, the sneezes. Ugh. The uh, 9730, I believe is the number's on the way out. Some of you guys are gonna be interested. They're a 100 watt device. <clears throat> and the new 2030s, the 2030 pluses are now out, of, out on the market. <clears throat> I mentioned before that I wasn't at liberty to talk about them. And I wasn't. I told the guy I wouldn't say nothing. And there will be some new Magnum radios on the way. Next year, maybe. And SL41 mics. Guys, uh, if you you can't wait. I know you're waiting on some radios, like the Anytones. They're all here. If, if it's really bugging you, let me know. But if you can wait, as soon as they're here, man, I'll, I'll get them out. And fours, are, there's still a couple around. And uh, let's see. On uh, like radios like these, 
anything with the 13 and 10s. The IRF 520s, I do I need to do some extensive testing before I let anything fly. The uh, Max Mod is a complementary device in accordance with the new transistors. And I need some time. Plus, before I purchase any, really, I'm just not going to buy them, you know, by bulk. I have someone that I'm talking to about matching them. It's not quite like matching a bipolar. It's going to be the gate turn on voltage and HFE or gain. I'm going to be purchasing them in a certain way so that they're matched. You know, certain lots of them that can be distributed into certain types of radios without having a lot of waste or a lot of money or time. You know, a technician can't sit here doing that. Not tech time plus bench time. So you know who you are. Please get in touch with me soon because I'm eager to get this tested. I think it's going to be a great device. After talking to Eric and the testing that he's actually performed on them at the foundry, they're going to be more durable. Not maybe more watts equal, or even if we lose a watt or two. I'm always looking for longevity and reliability. And then if we can get them to where they all have the same gain HFE or, you know, MOSFETs are rated different, I'll be happier too. Alright? Yeah, I've had some of these, and I have some of these all the entire time through, but some guys wanted to buy them. It's like, I, I keep them for, you know, customers that have been around for a decade, two decades, that type of stuff. Don't be mad. You'd be the same way. I hope some of this is informative. Click subscribe, like, dislike, can't stand me, you're digging it, whatever. And you guys that have been telling me about the soldering, I'll try to show you more in the future and uh, about voltage drop. You know, while we're doing that right now, I'm just mentioning that, I don't need a negative the way my bench is wired, it's all done correctly. But for instance, positive. There's the voltage. See my scope? I'll do this one of these days. But the way you would do this, naturally, depending on how you have everything wired and what type of meters you're using, you would test this on the inside of the radio. Fully modulated at voltage. First you start off with a reference, and that's floating. And then you go to the source, test it, write it down, write down source, like right out of spreadsheet. And then you come back over here and see what the voltage is floating, just the radio on or the radio off, and that would be just the loss in the DC wire and all the connectors to determine how much loss that's that's in everything in every single connect connection you would retest it under a load and or on and off. You don't have to do every single on and off and you know under fully modulated. You first virtually test source voltage, then you come back here, test it, then under under load, fully modulated, like what I showed, full tone, etc. Then you work your way back and then you write it down, you know. And you'll be able to determine I'm not gonna pull this apart. But from even from here to where it's connected to the circuit board to the loss in the solder joint from here to here. Then from this connector to this connector to the other side of it through that fuse or whatever you got all the way down the line. You could also do the same thing with grounds. Some of you guys are saying, hey man, that's cool. And well get a head start so you can start doing this yourself. You guys are hearing some of my radios out there just barefoot talking. Some people say it's not possible. Some people say ridiculous. But they're doing what they're doing because these guys are listening. Some already know. You know, I didn't want to do a lot of videos because it's teaching my competitors at the same time. And they'll say they already knew this. They all do. You know. But anyways, I'll start showing you more and more things that you can actually do at home. But if you go out and buy some Radio Shack cheap-ass soldering iron, 
and Chinese solder, man. Don't bother. Don't even watch these videos. You're wasting your time. You have to have decent equipment. All right? Stay tuned in about the IRF-20s, pluses, possibly some new boards for these and some other amplifiers that may be on the market. Hope everybody has a great day. If you're out there on those highways and byways, don't forget, safety first. Click, click.